All these defects are spiritual. And I want to ask you a question. Are any of these things in your mind? If they're in your mind, every single one of these can be cured by the Spirit of the living God. Where God can come in there and do amazing and powerful things in your life. Your family needs this. Your, your world needs this. Our work areas, our lives need to be priests that God can use. Now, first of all, I understand it's spiritual. God said, I can't use a blind man at all. I can't use it to do what I really want to do in his life if he's blind. Think about what a blind man is. A blind man is literally automatically disqualified. Why? Because the priests without vision are useless. I want you to understand, some of us are like that. We come in the house of God, we're blind. We don't understand what's going on at all. Today I want to tell you that God wants to give you some eyes. God wants to begin to see your family saved. God wants to see your marriage restored. And God is saying, yes, I can't use you if you can't see the will of God. I can't use you if you can't see what I want to do. I can't use you if you can't think and see that I can do great things in your marriage, your life, your home, your ministry, everything in your life. I cannot move in your life if you've got eyes that cannot see. Now everybody has eyes. But eyes that see are rare. I'm talking about the eyes of God. You can look and say, man, I can see my family being restored. I can see myself walking on the streets of gold. I can see great things for my life. It's called vision. And God says, I can't use it, man. You ever see people that uh, have no eyes at all? You ever see people that are negative all the time? They're sitting there like, man, God's not going to do this. And God's not going to do that. They lack like vision. They lack like dreams. They lack like women. And I serve a great and a mighty God. I serve the great I am, not the great I was. I serve a God that is on my side. I serve a God that loves me, that cares me. I got eyes that can see. And God says, I can't use a man that's blind. God wants you to know today that you've got to have some vision today. You have to understand that when Luke 6 or 9 says, when the blind and the blind both fall into a ditch, it's natural, you guys, to be blind, okay, for a while when you first get saved. But you don't have to stay blind. God doesn't want you being blind. God wants you to see the things of God. A blind person cannot see where they're going. A blind man will fall. If a blind needs a blind, both of them fall in the ditch. I want to make you understand that in your work areas, there are people that are spiritually blind. There are people that are on their way to hell. And what God needs today is some priests that will stand up and say, listen, I know the way. I can see clearly now. I know who I am in God. I know who I serve in God. We serve a great God that can do miracles. That can heal you. It doesn't matter how big or how sad or how great your problem is. We serve a God that can heal you, restore you, help you do miracles if you only let him in your life. Well, I didn't know this because I can see the things of God. The Word of God is supposed to be seen. The Word of God is supposed to be caught. The Word of God is supposed to say, God, I can see what you're saying and I believe in God. Thank you, Sister Rick. You know, they say the survey was done, was done in the United States. They asked, how many of you know the vision of God has for your life? This is the people of God. There was a vision done in the United States, but they asked the people of God in a poll, how many of you know the vision of God has for your life? Across the board, in a large number of churches, about 10% have put their hands. That means that everybody out of all the churches in the world, in the United States, they say, hey, how many of you know the will of God for your life? And 10% of the people lift up their hands. Let me ask you now, how many of us know the will of God in your life that you have? It's okay if you don't know, but how you know? Look around. Keep your hands up. Look around. It's crazy. It's like 10% too. Probably 5 6%. Not that many people at all. But in another poll, I said, okay, now, at the 10% that are literally no will of God for us, how many of you are actually doing the will of God for your life? Only 1% out of that are you lift their hands up. It showed a national survey that one out of every 100 people know that they're doing the will of God in their lives. They showed a national survey out of 100 people, only 10 people knew that the will of God, the will of God, but only 1% actually were doing the will of God in their lives. And we're going to see why the church is crippled. We're going to see why people are blind. We're going to see why the world is sucking up the church of God. We're going to see why the world is getting like the, 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 the church is getting like the world. We're going to see the compromise throughout our nation. We're going to see the downfall of America. We're going to see all these things in our lives. And what I'm trying to say is your job is to say, God, what is the will of God for my life? That should be your number one thing. Because it's, it's, it's crazy to live in your life and you don't know who you are. It's crazy to live in your life and you grow up and you say, man, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what's going on. Do you remember when you went to high school? Do you remember when you went to school? Do you remember thinking, what am I going to do with my life? It's scary. Think about that. That's just a career. Think about who you are in God. What has God made you for? What is your purpose in God? Because every single one of you have a purpose, a calling, a destiny. Every single one of you have gifts, skills, and abilities that God's given you, only you, that you're supposed to do. And think about this, it's crazy now. For only 10% of the body of Christ knows the will of God. And only 1% actually doing the will of God. 
or in some big trouble. Think about your body. Or your, only 1% of your body, okay, was working in your body. You would either need a resurrection or a burial. Feel me. Did you know that? If only 1% of your body was working, you would be planning your funeral or planning a resurrection. Did you know that? Because something's going on. Only 1% of your body working. That's like a little toe. That's it. Something's wrong. Think about your life today as an individual. You have to know your calling in God. You have to know your purpose. Oh, I don't know. But this week, see God, will you show me that God? You know how you show it, first of all? This is going to get off my sermon. You know how you show it? Because you get around people. You know people who are called gifts calling out of your life? I didn't know that I was called to be a preacher. I didn't know I was called to minister. But as I started going around people, I said, Dad, how are you doing today, sister? I started talking to people, ministering people. And I said, I like this. And I kept talking to people. And I would go to different parts of the world like that. And I would see like that. I love to do this. And one of the things, when God calls you for something, and it's your purpose and your will, it's not something you don't like to do. There's some that, man, I, I can do this. It's not easy for me. You don't got to pump me up to talk to nobody. I can talk to you all day long. That's my wife. All day long. I can sit there and say, man, let us have church all day long. So you say, well, I'm leaving after this. But what I'm trying to say is this. Usually people can see me. Usually people, you something that they didn't have to pump you up at all. But I started realizing, and I remember coming back from Russia in 1993, and I remember saying, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do in my life. I know what I'm supposed to do. I said, you know what, Pastor, I'm called, I know that I'm called to minister the Word of God. And, and right then and there, I started preparing my life. Right then and there, God started dealing with my life. And I want to tell you something, it's crazy, but every single one of you guys say, God, what is your will? Let me tell you something, God does not want to hide the will of God for your life. God's not going to say, well, no, I'm not going to tell you, you guess it. If you ask God, God, what is my purpose? What is the will of God for my life? God will show you what the will of God is for your life. And when He shows the will of God in life, then you've got to start doing it. Some of you right now, the one person lift up your hand and said that, that, that I'm doing the will of God, or you don't know the will of God, you gotta start, or you don't know the will of God, but do anything, you gotta start doing it. That's why you're not happy. That's why so many guys, people sit there like, I wanna quit, I don't wanna do this one, and they go off their feelings instead of being off of God. I trip out and say, I feel like I can't do this, and I feel like, um, what, do you, what do you ever come ask God what he feels? What do you ever say, God, what do you think about my life? Instead about what you feel. It's not about what you feel. It's about God. Do you want me to do this in my life? And if you do, God, I'm going to obey you. You're my Lord. You're my master. You're my king. You're my everything. You're the one that put me on this earth. You're the one that put life inside of me. You're the one that raised me up. God, you're the one that called me. What is my calling? What is my purpose? Tell me, God, because I do not want to be unhappy in the at all. Amen. I don't want to be that. Blind. And I know that probably going too long blind, but blind is big. God wants to heal someone so that we can see. God wants to start showing us things. In which case, it's very important you find the will of God for your life. And I'll be praying with you. Because some of you, you might say, I don't know what the will of God for my life. I'm not saying I know it, but I can't give you some pointers to look for it. And you say, listen, I want to start asking God. And God starts showing you. When He starts showing you, it's time to start doing it, man. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 18, it's not a powerful point, but there's no vision that people perish. But He that keeps them all happy to see. The second thing that God said, I can't use a lame person. A person that was lame was unacceptable in the priesthood because if he could not walk the route of God, he could not lead others in it as well. And there are a lot of people that are lame where they can't walk spiritually. They can't walk. And if you can't walk and you can't be an example, how will you lead other people? How will you show other people the route? And these last days, there needs to be a generation that says, God, I'm not a lame man at all. I can walk. I can move. And I want to show people the route of God. I want to show people to get on the highway of God. I don't want to take people on the back streets no more. All of our lives are trying to search for God. What do we do? We want the back streets. I want to take the main highway straight up to God. I want to show the route to God. You know how you serve God? You know who, who, who leads to God? It's Jesus Christ. Straight up, right up to heaven. Amen. It's the way to God. There's billions of religions all over the world. And everybody claims it's this way, it's that way, it's that. No, it's this way. It's Jesus Christ. But he is not the reason he died for nothing. He died for nothing. He died because he's the way. There's no other way. He's the truth. Every other way is a lie. He is the light. Every other way is death. Amen. God gave us one way. Why one way? You still get it wrong. One way, he said, my son. That's how you come to me, right there. There are people that are lame in the world. There are people that are church that are lame. You might have came in a day and you're not saved, but you don't know how to walk at all. But God wants to get you out that wheelchair. God wants to get you out and put your feet to work. God wants to use you that you can show your family the route of God inside of your life.